calls us go beyond just being good folks, paying our tithes, and coming to church. Amen. But uh, beginning to see the power of the Almighty God. If God's called us to be in the supernatural, then it's not about us, it's about Him and what He wants. So uh, praise God, just, uh, just continue to pray. I, um, I thought that that would be a challenge to us to begin to have something to pray for, pray about, and uh, begin to ask the Lord that uh, he would uh, help us. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. i just not really sure where I'm going to go today. It started, um, started last week when I um, uh, was in Ezekiel chapter 43, and we sh I shared the fact that, that um, he had a vision, he began to see a vision of the um, of, of the tabernacle that wasn't yet. And I've, I've really, I'm, I'm a firm believer in this, that the scripture declares that without vision, um, King James Bible says people perish. But um, a better translation is, one of the better translations, uh, the revised says, when there is no vision, the people take off restraint. In other words, they just have no control over the way they think, the way they desire, the things they want, and whatever. So uh, the vision, I believe, of him seeing this wonderful church, this great tabernacle, and, and all of that it was really something. And um, as I... As I've read the scriptures over and over again, one of the scriptures says that the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the glory of the former house. And I believe what God was talking about was talking about a building. He was talking about some, uh, what Abraham looked for. He looked for a city with foundations whose builder and maker was God. And when you begin to talk like that, what is a city? I mean, if you went to Springfield and all there was is the streets and the lights and the buildings and no people, it would be no city. It's what makes the city is the people, the inhabitants of the city. And so when I begin to take a look at all of that, I begin to realize that God wants to do something that's beyond comprehension. And he's... Um, uh, Paul said in his writings that what it was was a mystery. And he said that God opened the mystery up to him and began to show him. And, and I, thought, uh, I thought Sunday while I was sharing, I, I thought about Paul. You know, um, you know, some of us need third heaven experience. We need to reach beyond the first and second dimension. You know, we, we see something like this, right? up here, and that basically is only second dimension uh, reality and all of that, but we have to step into this third dimension into God, this greater dimension in God where the glory is released, where the, the greatness of the glory is released. We, we, we get a lot of teaching in these days on grace and love and all of that, but we get no teaching on the other side of God the, that puts the fear of God in us that puts the, 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 that deeper dimension in God so we see God in all his fullness and all his glory and what God is really after. So um, anyway, I, I, I want to go back and I, I just want to talk about a couple of things I, I didn't deal with last week. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, um, if, uh, if I'll even get it. But turn with me to the book of Habakkuk. I, I, I think I want to go there first. Habakkuk. Let me... Um, let me start chapter 2, verse 12. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read a, 
if I sound boring, you just leave me alone. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to follow the mind of the Spirit, what, what God has given me. Okay, chapter 2, verse 12. Woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed. And, and we, God forgive us if we've ever done this. But the, the bottom line is that, that uh, I don't care whether it is, it's our church or whatever it is, we always think we're better than the next guy. And we have this tendency sometimes to talk down. And that's bloodshed. And God has to begin to put us together to a place where the only shed blood is the blood of Jesus. And that establishes us. And we begin to realize that he's picked us out and set us in a place with a purpose. And we have to pursue that purpose. This church here is not going to be like the church down the street. And there's nowhere you're going to look. You're going to have relationships, but you're, you're not going to be all the same because God fits everything. Just, just tell me that your little finger, this little finger over here, and this little finger over here are the same. They're both little fingers, but they're not the same. Same way with this little finger is not the same as this thumb or your toe or your eye or your ear. But each part of the body has its own place, its own function, and its own glory and its own reality, okay? And some parts of the body develop faster than others. Think about that. A little, who, where's the littlest baby in here? I think it's uh, uh, Rachel. Yeah, she's the littlest in here. Should be two on Sunday. I can remember her birthday. So, should be two. But but when she was born, she had toes and she had fingers and she had eyes, and she had she had everything it took to be what a uh, human is. But it wasn't all developed. And there's a process of development. And so in every dimension, I don't care if it's churches, some churches can, you saw this video, this little girl had a problem that hindered her development. It happens to a lot of us. And we got to come to a place where God's reality is greater. I gotta get back to reading this, okay? I, I talk too much. Woe to him who builds a town of bloodshed, who establishes a city by iniquity. Behold, is it not of the Lord of hosts that the people labor to feed the fire, and nations weary themselves in vain? Just think about that. Think about the world you live in. Think about every nation. They all want to be on top. They all want to do their thing. Okay? But the bottom line is God's got a plan for it. So let's get to the next verse. Verse 14. For the earth. Say the earth. The earth. Say that's what we live on. The planet. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge. Not the not. I, are you listening to me? You've got to read this rightly. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Are you listening to me? So it doesn't say that there will be glory in every spot, but it says there will be glory, and it will be so great that it will be like waters covering the sea. So where, where the sea is is where the water is, right? <laughs> I like Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes talks about rain, talks about the rain that falls down. It goes into the stream. The stream empties into the river. The river empties into the sea, and the sea never overflows. And guess what? It goes out in the sea. The sun shines on it. It all evaporates. It goes back up into the clouds. It picks it all up. 
and it rains all down on the earth again, and this cycle just continues to go over and over and over and over again. Now, we know what rain is, we know what streams are, we know what water is, but it's not everywhere. Are you listening? Okay, but it's glory. Say, wherever there's God's people, there should be a manifestation of his glory. Wherever you go, you should radiate a manifestation of his glory. God's purpose is the glory. Chapter 3. The prayer of Habakkuk. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. Say, God, we've been here long enough. Revive us again. Just keep the reviving again. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. So in other words, if you're upset with this God, show mercy. And God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. One translation says, his glory covered the heavens like the sunrise. Say, God, we need your glory every day of our lives. The bottom line, beloved, is if it doesn't happen, you know, we don't recognize it. Is it because that isn't where God is working to? That's what he's after. It's up to us to become receivers. Okay? Uh, let me see. Zechariah. Zechariah, chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse, let me see. Um, okay. Let me, let, let me start verse 1 because it's difficult not to. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Say, every one of us need to measure up to God's standard. So I said, what, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem. How many understand that every time Jerusalem is mentioned, it speaks of the church? Do you understand that? Every time it speaks of Jerusalem, it speaks of the church. The church is the city of God, the reality of God, the place of God. To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the width and what is its length, okay? I want to see how wide it is. I want to see how long it is. And if it's limited, guess what? You got the picture? If it's limited, you can only put so much in it. Listen to this. And there was an angel who talked with me going out, and another angel was coming out to meet him, who said to him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. Say, God's church is going to cover a whole lot more of the earth than we've ever envisioned. We're used to our 80 to 100 or whatever it is, but God's plan is that his church is going to cover the earth. For I, for I says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be the glory in the midst. When God's glory begins to start inside of each one of us, are you listening? 
Who can stop it? If the only one that can stop it is you and I. You and I, no more God. No more God. But when God begins to release his glory in the midst of us, it'll begin to manifest and do what it wants. Amen? Chapter 6. chariots I'll get preaching and then that'll be it but the first few verses where he talks about the four chariots speaks of the four living ones that we find in the book of Ezekiel the four living ones we find in the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation if you just if you, if you just read and understand you'll understand what he's saying verse 9 then the word of the Lord came to me saying receive the gift from the captives from all these guys who have come from Babylon and go the same day and enter into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah, and take the silver and the gold and make an elaborate crown and set it on the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. Joshua and Jesus in this prophecy are the same, but it's really Jesus the Christ. How many of you don't know what I mean when I say? Jesus the Christ is not the individual who walked on the shores of Galilee. It is him and his body. Okay. Behold the man whose name is the branch. Are you all, all listening? You know that Jesus isn't the branch. He's the vine. He himself said that in John 15. I am the vine and you are the branches. What does that mean? It means you are the fruit bearers. You are the ones that bear the glory. You are the ones that release the glory. You are the ones that the glory rests upon. Are you listening? Here I go. Behold the man whose name is the branch. From his place he shall branch out, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. He'll do what? He'll do what? Where's it going to get built? It's going to get built in the hearts of you and me. This is the temple. And what is the temple to do? It is to bear the glory. It's to manifest the glory. And he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory and shall set and rule on his throne and he shall be a priest on his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both. What that means, the council of peace, he came and made peace between the king and the priest. Are you listening? He's not just a priest and he's not just a king. He's both. He's a priest on the throne, okay, a priest on the throne, a rolling, ruling priest on the throne. That's what we need in every nation on the planet. A real priest on the throne. One who has the heart of God. You know what a priest says? He's got God with this hand. And he's got the people with this hand. And he brings them together into a dimension. That's the job of the priest. Amen? Help me, Lord. i got to hurry. Turn with me to Hebrews. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Let's go to the New Testament so you think I'm not just talking about Old Testament stuff. Okay. Oh, help me, Jesus. 
Jesus. I think I read this last last week, but I want to bring this part back in. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. For it was fitting for him, verse 10, for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons to glory. He's going to do what? That does not mean he's taking people out of here to go to heaven. Bringing sons to glory is bringing sons to his character, to his nature, to his reality, to who he is. Say, until we all come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ. Say what? Say God is not going to stop working on us until we arrive. He's not. And you know what? The older you get, and when you begin to realize that all the people that have been around you are dead and you're still alive, you keep saying, bring it on, God. We need to hurry up. We need to get this thing working in here while we're still breathing. Because God's purpose is while we're breathing. He doesn't want to have to do it over there, whatever over there is. What God wants to do, he wants to work this glory, this reality of bringing many sons to that dimension while we're still here on planet Earth. Because it's not doing the rest of the world any good when you're gone and you got it. Because you all know, they all lie at funerals anyway. You can live like hell and they'll talk how good you were and how blessed you were and da 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 They all lie at funerals. They lie. I want God to bring the fullness of who he is and what he has destined for my life. You know, I was, yeah, can I tell a story now? It was just about this time, just about, um, it was just about February, the middle of February, sometime in the middle of February, 50 years ago. And uh, I had gone down with Danny, I've told this story, I'd gone down and signed up for the electrical apprenticeship. I was 29 years old, and, uh, and, and they told me I was too, er too old at the time, you, you're, you were not supposed to be more than, not have reached your 26th birthday, and, or you couldn't get an apprenticeship. It isn't that way anymore, but because they, they keep changing the rules for whoever they want to. But anyway, that's federal government. That's not, it's federal government that sets those regulations. So anyway, I, w I was working 11 to 7, and um, I stopped the Dunkin'. I, I stopped the donut shop to get donuts and take them home to the kids. And uh, I pulled in the donut shop, and just as I pulled the car up in the donut shop, the Lord said to me, I'm going to give you this job, and it's going to put you in the ministry. And I had no clue what the job would be like. I had no clue what my ministry was going to be. I had no clue. I had no idea. But I heard God say, I'm going to take this job and I'm going to use it to put you in the ministry. And I began to think about that. You know, it didn't happen the next day or didn't happen the next year. You know, it was what, 16 years later. And when we showed up here, we had no, no plans on starting a ministry. We came here on a five-day vacation. Came here to baptize one lady in Irene's pool, and she backed out. And the next day, I went to work. 
and here I'm still here. And I began to think about that. I said, God, you've, you've motivated, you've moved, you've used, you've done all of that, but this, I'm still not satisfied. I love all the people. I love all you guys. But there's one thing I, I, I need. I need a greater anointing of his glory, of his presence. I am not satisfied. I have never been satisfied. There's, if, if I knew what I had to do to really receive more of what God has available, because when I began to read that his purpose is to bring many sons into glory, to bring the glory, I, 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 I've, I've, read, I've read Solomon's house over and over and over again. I want to see the presence of God begin to move in this house to the point that there's not one of us can stand up to minister, that the Lord will bring the mighty power of God in the place that shakes us to our uttermost. Because who by taking thought can add one bit to your stature? either natural or spiritual. I can put a little around here. I know what causes that. But, but, but the issue is, what, what we're looking for, beloved, is God to work something in our innermost to the point that we cannot stay away from where God is meeting us. Are you listening? I love you tonight. But I'm trying to stir inside of you some passion that's more than just your everyday affairs or any of that, that God will be so supernaturally working in the innermost of us that we can't look for anything else but. Amen? Amen. Let me see. Do I have another one I want to read? Yeah, I'll read one more. It's not 8.30 yet. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Let me read a little bit. I, I got a few verses to read here, but I want you to grasp some of the stuff of his glory that is in the midst of this. Chapter 1, verse 3. And blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in, I, I hate this statement, places, okay? If you look in your Bible and you see it's italicized, that means it's added. The Greek word says, in the heavenlies. Say, heavenlies is the realm of God. Say, God's realm is in that space between me and Ryan. You can't see it. It's spirit. You can't feel it. It's spirit. But the heavenlies, Jesus told us that the heavenlies were within our grasp. Say, just out beyond my fingers. Come on, just out beyond my fingers is where God lives. In the heavenlies, in the realm of the unseen, in the realm of the spirit. I was, I was chuckling yesterday. We were eating dinner and... Um, we eat dinner to Dr. Oz every night, so we eat one thing, and he's trying to get us to eat something else. So I, I, just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get all of this. But anyway, he had this. What do they call him? A soothsayer. That's what I call him. Anyway, she was in there reading people's 
thing, she's talking to the dead. But all the dead that she was talking to, it didn't matter how they died, they're all in heaven. And I thought, Lord, is this true? And you know what he said to me? He said, he gave me the scripture out of 2 Corinthians about the, about the, the, their angels of light. They want you to think you can live any way you want, do whatever you want, doesn't matter what you do, but you're going to end up in heaven with God. And I began to realize there's so many voices in the land that lie to us. And if it isn't in the book, if it isn't in the book, I don't care how big their church is. I don't care how many people they got following them, how big their ministry is. If it isn't in the book, if it isn't written, oh, help me, I'm preaching. I don't want to preach. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation or the formation of the world. He didn't say the earth, he said the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption. Now I'm going to stop for those of you who never heard me say this before. The word adoption here is not, is not what we know as Western adult adoption where you take a child out of one family and put it in the other. This word is weothacian. The word weos is son, and thacian means to be placed. In other words, this is how it's done in God's. He takes the child, puts him into the hand of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost trains him, matures him, nurtures him, and then he's placed in the hand of the Father as a set son. Are you all listening? Having predestined us to this positioning of sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise, say the praise, of the glory of his grace. Say his grace is glorious. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Here we go. Wisdom and prudence. God's wisdom. What is wisdom? I mean, you know what wisdom is for us. Jesus Christ has made unto us wisdom. Say, our wisdom is in Jesus Christ. There isn't any other wisdom. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. So in other words, if God can purpose it in himself and he's to give it to you, do you think God would give himself anything that would hurt himself? That in the dispensation or the stewardship of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. What's he going to do? He's going to gather everything. Things in heaven and which are in, on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Say, when I first trusted in Christ, he began to work praise to his glory in us. Say, every believer has a bit of his glory working in it. 
In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were seated with him and sealed with him in the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee, say the guarantee, of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Say his glory that started something in us, according to Philippians, is going to finish in us what he started. What he started in us, a little glory, but glory is increases and increases and increases. My cry is, God, give me more. I need more. I want more. I want you to have more. I want you to have passion for more of his glory to be working in you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I'm going to quit. Next week, if God allows me, I'm going to talk to you a little, about, a little bit about uh, Ezekiel 37 and some dry bones. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shall we sing?